Welcome back. It's Leg Up with Mike Leg on ESPN Radio 98.9 FM, Charleston, South Carolina. Thanks so much for being with us. We have decided to extend a little sub-franchise of the show. Uh, I was just thinking about it one day. I'm like, you know what? I got a lot of buddies all across the country, and they know their stuff. We've all debated about sports over the years. They follow this team, or I follow this team, and maybe sometimes that clashes, obviously. So we uh, are going to continue with something. We've done it once already. We're doing it again in this segment here. We are instituting what's called the buddy system. So I'm going to pull a buddy of mine in from somewhere else in the country to talk about a topic of the day. Today's big topic is the mess at Baylor. And so I just happen to know a guy. I've known him for, I don't know, 30-plus years now. We grew up in the same hometown where he's a, he's a Baylor guy, went to school there, follows the programs. And I say, what better guy to talk about this with than this guy? So a friend of mine, Billy Withrow, is with us now. I was going to call you Baylor Billy or Billy Baylor, but I don't know how you feel right now. Maybe you don't want him attached to your name. How you doing, pal? Well, let's just say I've been called a lot worse. So I <laughs> those those titles I could probably live with. And I hate to break it to you, but I think 40 years is about how long we've known each other. So that doesn't make either one of us feel good. Wow. Has it been that long? That's crazy. <laughs> hey, and here's another thing that the audience will get a kick out of. You've probably been called worse by me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, and it's usually on a missed blocking assignment in some practice back our, in in uh, our high school football days. That's but, true. Uh, that's true. Nonetheless, but uh, yeah, this is a big mess, and you know, I've I've tried to compartmentalize this from a fan's perspective because it's real easy to look at it from just how does this affect Baylor sports. But there's a it's a little bit more nuanced and complex than that, and it's got. You know, some of this is transferable to all schools, and people can say, well, this could happen anywhere. And, and yes, it, it not only can, but it does. But I think that's also the easy way out because there are some things that are kind of specific about how these things are handled that I won't say are unique to Baylor, but definitely uh, happen more easily there. We, uh, just like any place, I just caught the last couple minutes uh, of your show before heading into this interview. I know you uh, mentioned the whole Penn State angle. And it is emblematic that in, in both high school and collegiate programs that these, co- these coaches are given a lot of autonomy. And they're dealing with kids that come from any number of different backgrounds, and they're trying to serve as mentors. And you know, I, I think it's real easy to say, well, they're, they're, they're always just looking out for their own self-interest. But a lot of times they're trying to bring kids along, keep them out of trouble, or smooth over some bumps for them, and they can get kids out of a bad situation into you know, the right road on life. And that can easily be misinterpreted as protecting their own self-interest because these are, are good players. But, you know, that's, it's not always the good players that, that are caught in these situations. But the amount of autonomy and power that we give to these coaches, I think they lose sight of, of what uh, they're really prepared to deal with. Because when you're dealing with sexual assault, and let me start by saying, you know, we're going to be talking about this from a sports perspective today. And I don't mean to be insensitive at all when it comes to this, because the number one thing that has to be looked at is the effect it has on the victims, the victims' families. And you know, that can't be glossed over and say, yeah, but what about the coach? What about the players? You know, the most important thing is, is, is how we improve to make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else and, and make the people um, – you can't make the people whole again that this happened to, but at least do your best as far as that goes. That being said, we are gonna, you know, this is a sports program, so that's kind of the angle that you know, I plan to talk about it from and answer any questions that you might have. But these coaches, you know, are, are trying to be positive influences on kids from, you know, high school, anywhere from 14 to 18, college 18 to 23. And um, they're not equipped to handle sexual assault. I mean, these cases shouldn't be going through a university either. They should be going straight through, you know, local authorities, which if you uh, familiarize yourself with the case, there's a breakdown with the, with the way uh, the Waco PD handled this as well. So there, there are any number of failures, but... Um, you know, somewhere along the way, these coaches were given way too much power, and it's not hard to connect the dots. You're looking at, at a multi-million dollar program that uh, has built a new stadium, and and uh, in, in our particular case, rose us from prominence from a a you know two to three win per season team to one that's you know at least in the discussion for the national playoff. Now, you obviously know a ton about this. You've read about it. Give me initial reactions, because I think once, when you see something for the first time, you form a certain initial opinion. And then 
uh, you use the words familiarize yourself with the case and with the situation, but take me back to when you first heard about this, I guess yesterday, and uh, well, initial reactions for you. Well, for, for, uh, for people associated with, you know, they're fans of the program, alumni, et cetera, you know, this has not been just out of nowhere. We've, we've heard bits and pieces. You know, there was the whole issue last summer with Sam Ukawachu and the problem isn't isolated is not an isolated incident because if it were an isolated incident then you deal with that and you move on because these things do happen everywhere but do we have a systemic failure of how we handle these as as an athletic program and unfortunately and and hopefully this will change but to this point the findings of the report were generalities you know they said we found that uh, members of the coaching staff did this action. They didn't say this person did this thing on this day, uh, and they don't need to name the victim things. In fact, they can, you know that's something that can't happen. But at least name who was responsible and when. But even just dealing with generalities, we find out that a member of the coaching staff met with a parent and a victim to to converse about this, and then did not move that case forward. Whether they tried to dissuade them or whether they just dismissed their claims or or what have you. There is no way on earth that that needs to be happening. And whether it was an assistant coach or the head coach, the head coach has to know about that. And that's in the discussion right there. I mean, I bleed, I bleed green and gold like nobody. I've been a season ticket holder for many years in both football and basketball. So, But you've got to take those glasses off and, and realize that that one incident alone, even if there were no others, that's termination right there. No doubt. So, you know, why we want to kind of, you know, you hear all these national journalists say, burn it to the ground. That's not going to happen. You, you, you've got to, to take this in a measured approach and realize that these are horrible transgressions. So you get rid of the transgressors, you change the culture, and you move on. But, you know, our athletics department isn't going anywhere. It's a multi million dollar business. Uh, and that's the problem. It, 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 sometimes Baylor, because it is a private Baptist university, is run more like a church than a business. And when you're dealing with the things we're dealing with, it, it's got to be ran in a, in a different way, and, it, and it's got to be run like a business, and it's got to have uh, a better chain of command. And we're not unique in this, but uh, you know th- there are some things about us that lends ourselves to, to, to make things a bit more problematic. So how are the AD and the president technically still involved and maybe drawing a paycheck from that school? It's a fantastic question, one I would love to answer, but unless they give us the specific results of who knew what and when, then it, that makes it a little bit more problematic to answer. Because, I, I mean, I would have no problem if they cleaned house top to bottom. You know, if, if, if that's what the evidence dictated. Now, I know there's definitely Baylor fans out there that are like, we're, we're responding to, to, to media pressure, and, I mean, and that's just nonsense. The transgressions were there, and changes have to be made. But I wish, and, and maybe they will release the very specific details and not generality, but I'd like to know who knew what and when. But the, there's a culture at Baylor, uh, and this goes beyond the athletic department because it, it, a simple Google search will bring up non-athletic-related incidents to where our uh, student affairs uh, and compliance uh, departments handle uh, sexual assault in the most ineffective of ways where, I mean, there are specific instances out there that put the burdens on the victim and, and not the aggressor. And, and it's easy to read up on. But, you know, we've got a code of conduct because being a private Baptist university, and it's nothing like BYU. So I don't want to make it sound like, you know, it, it, it's that buttoned up of a situation. But it's not like a normal state school. And it kind of puts victims in a situation where if they say they were drinking alcohol or they were in a situation that might be in violation of that code of compliance, then they're afraid to come forward because that, you know, the, the reasons they were there, despite the fact those reasons have no, no reason why they should be uh, put in, in the position they were, they're still hesitant to come forward because they were in violation of the student code. And I also think that Baylor suffers uh, to a degree from that that doesn't happen here mentality. That's why singular incidents might get buried because they're like, well, that doesn't happen here. We need to just kind of sweep that under the rug. And I think that has enabled, to a degree, um, some of these things to go forward to where if, if we had a better example in the past of shutting these things down, 
um, it might serve as a greater deterrent. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I know that we wa- learn from these things going forward, but there's just a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, dirt on people's hands from all this. I may have mischaracterized you as a fan, and fan is short for fanatic. Your opinion about this thing is not fanatical at all. It's very well measured. I'm impressed. Well, don't get me wrong. I mean, I I am very concerned about who our next coaching hire is, how quickly we can get them in, how we how we can stop the bleeding on our on our recruiting class, uh, which our 2016 may or may not be let out their letter of intent. Our 2017 class, which was shaping up to be one of the best in the country, is surely you know people going elsewhere all over the place. So I am very concerned about those things. Um, but at the same time, this is real life, and, and there are people involved, and, and um, you know, there's some greater issues that have to be addressed, and if they're not addressed, they're going to repeat themselves. But don't, don't get me wrong, I can talk about the football side all day, and you know, anybody who, who talks about this program going away, we're in a Power 5 conference. You know, our, the Big 12 payouts per school are, uh, I believe, ranked third amongst all Power 5 conferences. So this is a multi-million dollar business. Baylor Athletics isn't going anywhere. Now, we may, may not be staying uh, exactly where we were in the rankings. There's going to be a drop, and how precipitous that is is going to be based on who do we hire, how quickly do we hire them, and uh, our, how many players are going to transfer. You know, our, our, I've already heard that our, uh, our freshman quarterback last year, Jarrett Stidham, is already saying that he's going to transfer. Um, you know, there, there's, there's definitely some words out there that, that we're going to be losing some people, and that's going to happen when you have something like this. My question is how can we hold it together? But that's not the most important thing we're talking about here. You have had a tough week. I know you're a St. Louis Blues <laughs> fan, too, aren't you? So you've had a I tough have. week. Man, that's a lot of bad news yeah. for a guy to handle in one week. It is, and my wife, you know, was, was very sympathetic. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm like, honey, maybe when I was younger I wouldn't say this, but it's just sports. Wow, that's good. That's good. <laughs> now, that being said, <laughs> I may have had a couple extra drinks this week. I'm not going to lie to you, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we do it with what we can. But, it, you know, this stuff has got to be a sense of joy for us all, but it can't just r- rule our lives. And uh, especially when you're talking about things that are happening to, to young girls and, and uh, you know, people not being protected the way they need, they need to be. The, the most ardent fan in the world, if they just open their eyes and put, pretend it was their daughter or their niece or their granddaughter, it's like, you can't have that kind of stuff happening. And, I, you know, like I said, I don't think it was necessarily malicious intent on our coaching staff to, to, to do these things. I just think they became overprotective of their own, probably in a lot of denial. And, you know, once you start digging a hole like that, it gets deep pretty quick. Well, it, liken it to this. You live in a certain place, and the grocery store and several restaurants are within two miles of your house. That becomes your little small world. And that football office and that football facility is its own little world, trust me. And what goes on outside of it sometimes doesn't even matter. I mean, some of those guys are in there 18, 20 hours a day. And it really is its own small little world. And the guy at the top of that sets the tone, sets the guys are in a good mood because the head coach is in a good mood. They're in a bad mood because the head coach is mad. So, it's uh, it really is its own little crazy world, and uh, well said, well said, my man. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate it very You're much. You're very welcome. The buddy system's working out. I think you've been you've been terrific. <laughs> you've been terrific. We're gonna have well, you back. Hopefully it. not about Baylor though. How's that sound? What's that? We'll have you back sometime, but not about Baylor. We well, can. I, trust me, I'm full of opinions on any number of things. <laughs> I mean, I. I, I was saying that uh, I've known you since uh, our prof- our favorite professional sport was wrestling. So uh, true, true. <laughs> we that uh, we can talk about any number of topics. Sounds good. Hey, Billy, nice talking to you, my man. Mike, it was my pleasure. All right, that's Billy Withrow. He's a friend of mine from way back. He says forty years. I don't know if it's been that long, but it's probably somewhere between uh, thirty-five and uh, forty years. That, that we have been friends so well done nicely done that's the key so, see barry i just want you to see that i have smart friends yeah buddy Got some smart friends that know their stuff particularly <laughs> on this particular topic and so uh i had no doubts yeah not well at all. some probably had doubts some probably had doubts but i did not 
So anyway, thanks to uh, Billy for joining us. He went to school at Baylor and knew he'd have a take. He had an awesome take. There's no doubt about it. 843-721-9500 is the number to call. We had a caller in a little while ago that uh, we encouraged to call back after the break, which we're late for. We will get to that caller. Uh, and if you want to call and weigh in on the whole situation, you're more than welcome to do it. Some of us, most of us, don't have nearly the type of information that Billy had because it's close to him. It's close to his heart. Uh, he's a fan, but he's also uh, a responsible human being. I think I probably had something to do with that when we were younger. <laughs> Don't you think, Barry? I mean, surely some of that rubbed off. Hey, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you take the credit. I'll let you take the credit. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't deserve any. There's no doubt about it. But eight four three seven two one ninety five hundred is our number. Eight four three seven two one ninety five hundred. Uh, like our Facebook page. It's Leg Up with Mike Leg. Also Twitter at Mike Leg Tweets. We're late for a break. Let's take it now. This is Leg Up with Mike Leg on ESPN Radio ninety eight point nine FM. <laughs> 